good morning guys it's saturday morning and obviously i can't afford to hire my cleaner to come to my house every other week <laughs> so it's usually like a once every eight weeks type of thing so it is the week i have to do the cleaning myself but thankfully because she comes like once a month to once every eight weeks i don't have to do like heavy heavy but at least like just keep up with like you know things like cleaning the toilets and stuff like that vacuuming so yeah i'm gonna be doing that real quick this morning literally less than 30 minutes for an entire house and at least i know that the house is clean yeah She's so guys here i am just cleaning up my bathroom i wanted to share this hack with you guys honestly i do not really like cleaning the bathroom especially the master bedroom bathroom because it's so much work it's so much work because you have to clean the shower you have to clean the tub you have to just a bigger space and just bigger areas to clean and i was like you know what this weekend is not even the weekend i'm doing any deep cleaning let me figure out a way that would be easier for me to clean my um my shower and guess what i used my good old swiffer got the you know the swift the swiffer pads and then i just put the regular you know um what's that the regular clorox and the the soap that i used to clean my showers and just put it there and it just made things so much easier for me literally my back wasn't killing me at the end of of this like my back was fine i was able to get into all the areas i wanted to get to um, in my shower it just made the cleaning session of this area so much easier i'm all for trying to get like the easier way of doing things because honestly like when you're a mom when you work when you have uh kids you, you just have a busy life you just need to find easy ways fast ways to do things in the most efficient way possible there's no way i'm gonna be cleaning my bathroom constantly killing my back all the time you know i definitely understand there are times when you have to do deep cleaning and there are certain areas and crevices that you really need to you know bend down you know crack your back to try to like get into those crevices and areas but you can pick specific days to do so but when you have to like do large areas in your house to clean this is the best way to go you all agree with me or disagree with me in the comments <laughs> my beautiful wonderful delicious and super ever tasty peanut butter soup i love peanut butter soup guys but it is a process to make it is one of the easiest soups to make in ghana however it is a process like just because for me i like to as you can see boil the peanut separately before adding it to the soup so there are steps to this because honestly before i got this soup to come out the way you know that ghanaians like to eat it it took me a while because ghanaian food i'm telling you is step by step bro. if you don't do it step by step the thing will come out messed up messed up you hear my accent i really mean what i'm saying like so you have to really take your time but my method i got it pretty straight because my lovely sweet ajele original mama betty kwanchiawa's kitchen whoever else's kitchen have really really amplified my skills in cooking on top of what my mom already taught taught me at home you know it's really really good when you have these people on uh, youtube to kind of help you know just solidify some areas that you may have missed at home because maybe you're outside playing or doing homework right <laughs> so yes here i am you know i am steaming my meat i have boiled my peanut on the side i have seasoned my meat and then poured my onion and my tomato back into my meat concussion you see that fried not fried but that dry fish it really changes the game when it comes to soup before i didn't know so much about dried fish because you know being born and raised in italy there are some things that you know uh, you know when it comes to ghana food you just do like the abroche type you know but when you add the ghanian one and you really really want to make a ghanian soup that dry fish it changes the game and it sure did for this soup i really really enjoyed making it and i really really enjoyed eating oh. it um <laughs> <Look at this. laughs> 
vlogging because as you can see i'm wearing this this is supposed to be a top you guys because i can't find any like um scarves in my closets that are like springish type because you really don't need them here in san diego um but i have like a bit of a sore throat um and i feel like the wind that's around like i just want to stay away from that wind so i'm kind of like trying to disguise this this top as like a little scarf because <laughs> what i'm wearing like the dress it's not really low cut but it, it you know like it kind of shows your neck and like a bit like up to up here and i just don't want anything to like get to my neck because um it's getting a little bit better but it's still kind of uh like when i'm swallowing it still kind of hurt a little bit so yeah that's the reason why i have not really been vlogging that much this week but i'm getting back to it this week is um it started off pretty chill because i honestly just decided to rest and uh, take some time to myself um you know i basically just did nothing and then i just been like just doing like work on my computer you know and stuff like that editing some videos and just regular work stuff um that i had to be doing and then um now towards the latter part of the week is getting real busy because i have to go and do visits today um i also tomorrow have to take my daughter to a dentist appointment and then my own dentist appointment girl you know i have not been to the dentist i want to say maybe now for 10 years this is how bad it is um, I've postponed it. I'm not gonna even put the blame on anything. I just have postponed it um, I just haven't prioritized my teeth <laughs> and it's not good like I used to This was back then when like I was like under my dad's insurance I want to say like right before I would get cut off. I was getting cut off I think that that was like I don't want to give out the age that I was because girl, <laughs> you don't want to know <laughs> Well, no, I don't care like I mean my early mid 30s you know but yeah about uh let's say 10 years ago or so yeah right before getting cut off of my dad's insurance which was amazing um i had decided to go and get like you know teeth cleaning and then you know when you have like little um openings in your teeth like they like do the fillings in there so they did all of that before i got cut off and then since then i had not been to the dentist um, I haven't really had the need to, but I shouldn't say this because I'm a nurse. Like, you should be going periodically, like, not periodically, you should be going consistently to your dentist to check your teeth. And I have failed, uh, like, enormously at that. And I need to get this together. I'm gonna go tomorrow. I'm gonna make a promise to myself to, like, be consistent with going to the dentist because tooth cleanings are really, really good. Because my teeth are naturally nice. I mean, they kind of look yellow right now because of the like lighting but they're they're nice like i have nice teeth but the thing is over time with food and you know just beverages and things no matter what you do even if you brush your teeth like constantly you still start to get like a little like yellowish stuff or like i don't know like discoloration for lack of a better word like in the middle of your teeth and um i started to notice some of that and i'm like ah, maybe i need to go to the dentist to see if i can do they can do something about that um i just kind of take more care of my teeth because as we age our teeth age also so yeah i'm gonna be doing that tomorrow so i want to say that's a bit of self-care on my end and it's so nice that i'm able to like combine the appointment my daughter's appointment and my own appointment together because that's going to make it so much easier like she's going to go in with her pediatric doctor and i'm going to in when my go in with my um adult dentist but yeah i mean pediatric dentist and adult dentist at the same time which is fantastic and so at the end of the appointment then they're going to give me the report of what happened with her and then of course i would have already had my own report so yeah that's mainly the appointment tomorrow and then hopefully they're gonna give me a nice tooth cleaning so i feel nice and, and really deep cleaned um in my mouth and yeah so that's basically tomorrow and then we're gonna go to gymnastics 
um, because baby girl is in gymnastics. She's still, you know, trying to learn her body and, you know, movements and stuff. But they did call me and ask me um, if it would be okay for them to move her um, a level up because she's uh, she's at that stage right now. And I was like, okay, cool. If y'all think she's that good, I think so too, you know. I always give her so much encouragement. But, you know, at this age, when I like, they're like below the age of like seven or so, I feel like it's more about exploring what they're their strengths are and kind of like learning their bodies and then I feel like at the age of like maybe eight or so that's when you really know what is it that their strengths are and what sport to really focus in because honestly we started with soccer and girl didn't like it she did not like it I mean daddy was all into it because you know dads love to have their daughters into soccer and all of that she has the body for it but she just wasn't enthusiastic about it she always got distracted i mean she gets distracted regardless anyway because she loves talking <laughs> but like with soccer oh my goodness like she just was not feeling soccer so we had to stop that because it was really just a waste of money because it was something that she expressed she expressed it to me first that she didn't like it so that i would tell her that <laughs> but then it was it just became clear that it wasn't her thing so we stopped um soccer but she was doing really good if she was listening to her coach but the thing is she didn't have the motivation to so we decided to just push a break on that but with gymnastics she does have the motivation she asks um about going she's excited to go she gets sad when we don't go um she enjoys the girlies um just that girly environment and she does pretty well in the while they're doing like the um the exercises yeah so i think it's something we're gonna keep investing money in to see how she does with it and how she grows with it and if it's something that indeed she should continue in um well into like school age and stuff so that's one thing um that um we're looking at and we'll be doing tomorrow also along with all of these appointments and then what else what else is a busy weekend y'all we have visitors from out of state coming in and so we're gonna be entertaining them then we have a birthday party and i think just like a community um um a community thing right around liberty station i don't know if you guys are familiar with it like a i think it's like a seafood festival type thing with crawfish and stuff which i really was interested in trying stopping by um so maybe if we find a little bit of time and energy i repeat energy maybe we'll stop and do that because you know when you you, you have visitors you kind of like you have to cook and kind of get your 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 house clean and then with the kids and you your energy level becomes like low very quickly especially with me i don't know about you guys but my energy level is like mm, especially when i get a little bit sick or like something is off like I'm, my energy level oof. but you know what i do know why it's also because i am anemic I, i've been diagnosed with anemia like since i was like in high school like um iron deficiency anemia and just like anemia like i just have something with my blood count you know i just i just get tired easier um because of it and i don't like to eat meat that much you guys they say oh eat some red meat so that that can help with the you know with that but I, red meats also have really bad side effects and i don't really like eating red meats that much so i'm trying to like um do more vitamin b12 supplements because iron it backs me up and another thing about it it makes me want to throw up every time I take it so I'm just gonna be doing vitamin B12 and hopefully that takes care of that a little bit cuz you know I was doing vitamin B12 shots but I don't know I, just because like being a nurse I haven't like studied the effect of, although like medicine changes like quickly and there's new discoveries like whatever every time I just haven't like most of the stuff that they are new now you've learned like some type of basics like in school already so that you're familiar with it but when it comes to like the, the some, some stuff that you haven't learned about at all like you kind of just be wondering like are these just like fake stuff that they're just trying to sell that are not illegal per se but 
that just want to make money off of so I kind of stopped that um, um, the vitamin B12 shots and so now I'm just gonna just do what I know which is the, the tablets uh, as a vitamins so yeah um, but yeah it's a busy week ahead I'll take you guys along with me um, there's nothing really so much about work this week it's gonna be boring I feel like for you guys um, but yeah I'm just gonna be doing visits um, seeing how my patients are doing it's recertification time for um, all my patients and so that's like the 60-day research um, and so I'm just gonna go check check make sure that their medicines are all you know up to date there's no expert expired medicines in the home um, that um, if they need anything reordered in terms of like supplies that we get that set up for them um medications like i mentioned just make sure everything is good if they have questions that um we can provide them answers with um just kind of update their care plan if anything has happened in between the last time we researched we researched them till now that we are not aware of um any hospitalizations usually if there's hospitalization we would have known but sometimes they forget to tell us and we just are left in the in the dark so we just need to note that um so yeah and uh, for me my visits are not too long because most of the time these families are busy and they really don't want us in the home for that long you know unless we're providing a solution to their problem at that moment they already have what they need from us um so um i think like not spending too much and just being efficient and um providing them what they need at that moment and being prepared is that really what makes a visit not be so long and I definitely definitely I used to before chart in the patient's home but I realized that that make the family very uncomfortable because now they're you are sitting there in their home and they're trying to get things done they feel kind of like they're being watched so what I do is I try to like document um, I take my documentation home and I do it at home and that gives me like more time to really be detailed and like not forget as many things that I would if I was in the home because I'm like in a rushing environment so that's what I do and I know for nursing what they always say is you you're supposed to document at its point of uh, care but it's unrealistic when you're dealing with um, home health care and uh, yeah just home home case man like home care case management it's just unrealistic because you're kind of invading the patient's family's privacy because you're now you did your assessment you provided them what you need uh, with what they need and you got the information that you need to update their care plan and now you want to sit there and document all of that stuff the documentation part it's not benefiting it's not their own though it benefits them because it's like leaving a trail of their care you know so that we have documentation of it but it's really not at the same time it's really not for their own particular benefit directly you get what i'm saying so it's like you're kind of like in their space i wouldn't want a nurse or a doctor to just sit in my house for like 20 30 minutes to document like no get out because i got stuff to do you know so that's why i do it that way so you you are like in the home for like maybe um say maybe like 30 minutes at the most at the most depending on like what you're doing in terms of assessments um you might be there a little longer if there's something going on with the patient um like or if you have a particular part procedure to do like maybe you have a wound care dressing to change or you have to assess a particular wound or something like that or maybe just IV antibiotics or something that you need to change or something like that but um usually if it's like the normal reassessment it shouldn't take longer than 30 minutes and then the, the documentation of it might take maybe 20 30 minutes if you want to be really concise and that's if you don't have like say orders to like change um to send to the doctors and wait for a response back you know so really a visit with documentation and everything it's a good hour and 15 minutes or so yeah minus the driving to and driving back and preparation so driving to driving back depending on you know because maybe your company might want you uh, might you know in the contract might have they may have asked you if you're willing to travel a certain amount of miles and that might be like an hour or so drive and if you said yes it might take you an hour to drive there an hour to get back home 30 minutes for the visit 30 minutes for another 
documentation you go at three hours almost four maybe so one visa could take half a day y'all one visa can really take you half a day so just um just just be sure if you're thinking about doing this type of job be sure that you are clear with your company um about the range of miles you're going to be going to visit patients because that can really really um have an impact on you know the quality of care you give because if you are you maybe you're traveling too far and you know you might be exhausted with the travel you know so I personally when I was in Chicago okay so when I was in Chicago I didn't like driving way too much but I was open like I would I, I was open doing like a 30 45 minute drive to see a patient because I was being paid for that time and I enjoyed you know I enjoyed like seeing different places I enjoyed doing that it was kind of like an exploration moment for me also but I didn't like doing more than 30 minutes 45 minutes because um, Chicago also is known for a lot of bad areas and I ended up doing a lot of bad areas you guys I don't know if you guys are familiar with Ingle Inglewood in the south side of Chicago after 35th Street and down and down Ryan that's like the the train Oh, you, I don't want to use the word, but you are in a bad neighborhood for the most part. Some areas are good um, and fine, but a lot are not. And when you're a nurse um, and you're not known in that area, you raise some type of a red flag um, and you might be a target. And uh, I've been told even by my patients and their families, just to be careful, some of them would, do, would like when they know like that you're coming they will be looking out for you in the neighborhood and even like as you leave they will like stay in the front of the door just to make sure you get in your car safely and then you actually drive off safely i've had an event where the family did just that they were so nice they made sure that like once i arrived they were outside waiting for me and then um I was leaving they made sure I was in my car and drove off but even when I drove off and they had closed the door there was a bunch of guys like on the street um, getting off of a truck and like just like kind of like it didn't look like a very safe situation they were all just staring at me and I'm just like I'm just trying to drive off you know like I'm just trying to get away and they were just there and um, I just I just calmed down you know and um, I just was just waiting and then I didn't reverse I just didn't want to do anything that looked like was mean or anything like that but I think like I don't know if I don't know what it was but then eventually they moved off and then just let me go but that moment was very uncomfortable it was very very uncomfortable I'm glad that time I was not driving a luxury car at that time it was during my beginning stages of nursing I was driving my little Toyota Prius <laughs> my blue Toyota Prius C but even at that time that Prius was a nice car you know and even now it is because that's a Prius you they're expensive um, but it wasn't like a luxury car like you know at the time so I, I, I didn't attract too much um, attention but definitely they were looking at me because they knew I wasn't from there so they're kind of like what is she doing here but sometimes when you're also not from there they kind of get scared a little bit because they might think maybe you're like some type of undercover or something so they might that's why maybe they don't do anything to you but then I don't know it just wasn't comfortable like you can be in the middle of like some type of a shooting you know just I didn't know what that was and so I was really scared but I just come down I just let them do the thing but I could have been involved in the middle of something and that happens every day on the south side of Chicago like a shooting that happens and people get killed for no reason like they just could get caught in the middle of it for driving in the middle of it maybe walking um, so it was so scary that um, I that's what kind of drove me out of home care at the time and so after that experience I honestly I stopped because it was just a PRN job for me at the time I was working full-time on a, on a skilled nursing unit um, and I just wanted to pick up extra hours and see how, see how that was like and that experience unfortunately scared
scared me because I was also a new nurse. Um, I did tell my boss at the time that um, I wanted to be in areas that were a bit safer, but at the same time, I felt bad because it's like people need care everywhere. So like once you start to become discriminative of where you want to give care, it's almost like, what am I doing? But then I'm like, I have to think about my life, <laughs> you know? Because these home health care agencies, you guys, a lot of them are very cheap when it comes to to their workers, like to their nurses. They don't provide very good um, benefits, very good protection. They don't provide a lot. You just get the pay that, and even the pay might not even be that good. So sometimes it's not worth it to put your life in jeopardy. For, for some companies, they don't really care about you, you know? I feel like they should have a better security system for nurses who are going out there in the field caring for patients. Like they should provide us with some type of like security gadgets. I don't know, but it's really needed because there've been nurses out there that have been really risked their lives for this kind of job. People thinking that nurses are carrying drugs like medications and like you go into these neighborhoods where there's drug addicts that once they know like you're wearing a uniform, they think you're carrying drugs and like things that they could use and they will jump you, they will beat you up, though they will do stuff to just get into your stuff. Um, because not only they might want to use it, they might want to sell it. You know, because for hospice, for instance, like when you are like depositing meds and all of that, some some nurses make the mistake of like putting it in their bags or putting it somewhere to take it to dispose it. And no knows, no knows. Those are the kind of things that can get you in some trouble. And so, yeah. But yeah, for Chicago, I was like 30, 45 minutes from where I live. That's the maximum I give them. Especially going south, I'm done at like, I don't want to say even 47th Street because 47 that you get, you're right in Inglewood around that area, depending on whether you're going east or if you're going west you're going to Inglewood from 47. If you're going east, you're going to the lake and it's a little bit better. Um, but south side, even north side can be bad. Um, so yeah, um, so then I move up to North um, Mount Prospect and that area, I'm like, if I tell them I'm willing to drive 30, 45 minutes, I'm, not, I'm only gonna get to like Rogers Park, so that's fine. <laughs> so that's what I did. And then here in San Diego, here in San Diego, I'm open to driving an hour. But the reason is because when I drive an hour up, and usually I'm up because an hour south from where I live now, you're going to Mexico. <laughs> so usually the, you are not going that far down. Um, but in in, in uh, San Diego, um, if I drive an hour up, I'm going to real nice areas, y'all. Real nice areas to the point where you feel like you're going on vacation. So I have no problem driving an hour if the, the visit is, if I'm visiting, like, my visit times are from, like, say, like, 10 in the morning to, like, 3 p.m. I'm open. I'm up in Oceanside. I'm up in uh, Temecula. I'm up in Carlsbad. I'm, I love those guys. Those areas are resort-like areas the beach the sun the palm trees what i will do when i go to those areas is i will go do my visit when i get out i will park by the beach do all my documentation listen to some good beach sounds and breeze soak up the sun with a nice uh a, a smoothie a salad girl it's a life you know and then when I'm done with all that, then I just drive on back to San Diego. So in San Diego, if you're doing home care over here, it's nice. I think it's, it's real nice because even just, you, everything feels like you are on vacation. I don't know if it's because I'm partly new here, um, but I just love everything about San Diego, except for the fact that this year or this past two years, it's been colder than I thought it would be in this place. Um, yeah, but anyway, let me stop talking. I've talked for like a whole 24 minutes, y'all. <laughs> but I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope my throat feels better. Mm -mm -mm. But what I'm going to be doing is also this weekend, if I get a little bit of extra cash, 
I'm gonna go not not this weekend. I'm not gonna be able to do that this weekend. Probably next week. Um, I'm gonna go to not Sephora. I'm gonna go to Macy's because Macy's has a wide variety of brands with like original things in there and I'm gonna go and pick out and that's gonna be the Macy's of Fashion Valley. I'm gonna go pick out um, new makeup. I need a new foundation and I'm going back to MAC y'all. I'm going back to MAC. The Fenty foundation, as sad as it makes me feel to say this because I wanna support my black sister do it for me i don't know if i just got the uh, a bad a shade or a sh uh, the wrong shade for my skin tone but it just it has not been given i just i don't know i feel like when I, when you wear makeup right you do want it to be as natural as possible and feel like skin but you do also want to feel like you've enhanced your skin right you've enhanced your look this lotion does not do that for me when i put it on yes it makes me feel like um it makes me look like i'm even but man it makes me look like i'm the color of this i think it must have been like a shade issue but when i put it when i squirt it on my hand it's it's even like lighter than my hand almost but when i put it on my face oh my goodness like it looks even i like that but i have to do a lot like i have to go back with my mac powder uh foundation to kind of like set in my real skin tone and kind of give it that you know yeah you 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 look nice made up nice you get what i'm saying so if i'm wearing makeup i want to look like you know i'm wearing good makeup like and i'm i i've, I've taken the time to 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 do something to myself i don't want to look like i just woke up and my skin is you know uh, uh, uh even because then I would look like this, you know. Literally, when I put that makeup on, I kind of look like this, just more even. Like you won't see like my birthmark, like like that, and then darker. So I'm like, no, no, no. I don't really like that lotion that much um, because it's not my skin tone, you know. It's just I want it to be like my skin tone, but then with a bit of, you know, when it it kind of say con di luce with a little bit of of, of um, light to it, you know. That lotion, that that that. That foundation didn't do that for me. I'm sorry, Rihanna, but I have to be honest. You guys need to do a little bit better with your um with your shades in there. And then like when you mix it, it doesn't really mix very well because like the like the, like the different shades that they added to create the the color of the the foundation doesn't really mix well. No matter what you like, I have to beat it before it shakes. Um, and mix and even then it still doesn't mix and then like even like the screw on top that you're supposed to use to pump the 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 foundation um onto like a brush or your hands it's not working so i have to like take the whole thing out and the little tube where the low the where the, the where the where the uh foundation is supposed to come up to when you pump it like it just leaks everywhere <laughs> no i am not gonna be um doing fenty i'm sorry and uh, the foundation is not cheap and i can be doing expensive foundation and then not getting the results i want i'm going back to mac and that's where it's at mac has always been good on my skin they do very very good like i find the shade that works for me it gives me that beautiful brightness in my dark skin tone it just brings it out so well and you do look like you have quality makeup on without um the flakiness without the oiliness without the um the like auntie needs to learn how to do makeup type of look you get what i'm saying like it's really nice it sets in well so i'm going back to mac i just wanted to try something different to see if it'll work for me uh, but the only two my um the only two uh what do you call them i keep forget it the only two foundations that i feel like work for me the first one i was using when i was like transitioning between college and like a real adult was um clinique and i use clinique like facial cleanser product now but not the foundation and then the other one that i've used that i've loved ever since which um i saw many of my friends using 
uh, was the Mac and I've stuck with Mac forever and then I, Fenty came up and all of that so I'm like let me support Rihanna let me try and see what's all this rave about it didn't work for me y'all it didn't work for me anyway let me just get all started I got a lot of stuff to do before I go on my visits I'm gonna try and fold some clothes no they already folded I just need to put them away and then um do a little bit of prep work and then head on out She wanna know me, I stay low key, I'll cast no breaks, baby. Let them hold sleep. Body on to make your girl OD. I get in my way, never out of my lane. Feel like you the one in the more one. So what is gonna be? Baby squad up, we finna go deep. Cause you riding on a team. Got what you need. Baby, won't you keep me company? Promise you never lie to me Keep the moves on tuck I know it's all out Everything good Keep the vibes on crush I know it's all good Know it's all are gonna go to the dentist today which is awesome that I'm able to book um, the appointments at the same time for the both of us with two different dentists and after that we have gymnastics today so we'll be doing that and uh, that's basically um, it for today for now oh and then I'm gonna go out this evening with hubby but um, after that Actually, I'm lying. Now that I'm talking, I'm thinking about my weekend. It's going to be busy. It's going to be full, y'all. So we have all this going on today. And then tomorrow, we have visitors. And then Sunday, we have a birthday party. So Monday is going to be one day, like one of my usual days where I just pass out. Because <laughs> like the weekend is like so, so full. But yeah guys i have a lot to rant about today i don't think i even have enough time before i pick up my daughter for this appointment to do all of that but in short i don't know how nurses are able to how nurses are able to deal with the current toxic work conditions that most hospitals nursing homes agencies and corporation put nurses through I have no idea how they do it I think that in the past um, nurses were requiring less of um, or, or, or nurses weren't expecting what was just towards them but as time goes on and patients needs even increase like I feel like it is only right that nurses pick up for themselves like we are in a situation where if you ask any nurse y'all you will know that you will find that a lot of nurses even the best nurses probably have had i don't know how many jobs on their resumes or maybe not even in their resumes that they've had to quit because of toxic work conditions that get slipped under the rug and nobody ever finds out about and nurses don't talk about them so much because what the truth is nurses can easily find another job within a month you can find another one but the thing that sucks about it is that there are so many jobs but there are so many bad jobs like so many that it's so difficult to like keep up with them like i don't know how many jobs i've had 
where I just try to push through so I don't look like I'm like skipping like or like I have so many jobs in my life but if you're working in a toxic environment how do you because believe it or not where you work is pretty much your life so if you are working every day most of the time over time and the place where you work is toxic the environment does not foster for a good work-life balance you're most of the time asked to do things that were not under your contract or say you were hired for something that you both agreed upon and then you come to find out that you're asked to do other things that you are like having to say no because that wasn't the agreement it's like what do you want nurses to do and you have patients who depend on us you can't ask a doctor to go and give an IV on a patient he doesn't have time for that unless he's a surgeon it's under surgery circumstances but like on the floor you can't ask a doctor to go give meds he don't have time for that it's nurses who do all of that nurses that assess nurses that write down observe for like symptoms how are the patients doing how are they responding to treatments that were prescribed and implemented like, once again by nurses like why are companies treating us this way they think that just by giving us a high pay it is like an umbrella to make it okay to create a toxic work environment but don't be mistaken, there is no dollar amount that you can put on any nurse for the type of work and the type of BS that we go through. Like, we don't just go through BS with the companies. But a lot of the times, family members don't also be very respectful. So we go through a lot with that too. But we just forget about it. We just try to get through our shit because we're already busy. We're not going to deal with all the extra stuff, you know? But it's about time that nurses rise up and speak up for themselves. I bet you that if all nurses were to wake up one day and say, I'm not going to work, I'm going to go and protest for my rights. Oh, a lot of businesses would just fall. But you know what, nurses don't do that because they care about the patients. If they're not working, who's going to take care of these patients? Most of the time, nurses think about the patients first. But guess what? That's what the companies are also taking advantage of because they know we have a damn heart it's wrong y'all they need somebody needs to do something about this career like we are out here advocating uh for nurses we are out here uh, trying to educate aspiring nurses we are out here giving inspirations but it's so difficult to do so when we are always or most often placed in situations where we are in unwanted conditions toxic environments unfair treatment where I've had an experience where I've been hired for a certain amount of dollars per hour and then right you're gonna have to watch girl uh, what, what was that and um, what was I gonna say guys but pay attention what was I gonna say I've been in situations where in situations where I've been we've agreed upon a certain salary per hour and then after orientation and right on my first day of work I've been called with a desire to discuss a change in my hourly rate I'm like who the hell does that I have never ever in my 12 years of experience have come across companies ever doing that and I said this is not even legal I let her know I was like you can't just do that you can't just come back and call me while I'm in the middle of a visit and want to rediscuss how much you're paying me per hour honey I accepted this job because of what we discussed not because of what you thought you could change do you understand if you don't need me come and do my job there you don't have the license you can't do it so you need me to do it so respect me like i don't know like you know when you tell people that you know like nurses like and when a nurse shows a non-nurse their resume they, that person might be like oh you you jump around a lot but you don't know what nurses is like you don't know nursing but if you go next to nurses oh it's same it's normal if you've been around if normal because all you're trying to do is find an environment that's non-toxic 
it's normal for a nurse to be at a place in three months and then bounce because three months you about to die oh my goodness guys i need to stop because i need to pay attention to what i'm doing i'm gonna pick up my daughter i'll get back to you guys see you later <laughs> how was school okay hopefully we can make it to this appointment on time because it's already almost two o'clock and we're supposed to be there at two Did you guys do anything fun at school? Yeah, play with Legos. Mm -hmm. What happened to even work? You didn't work today? <laughs> yeah, when we did one work and everyone did one work and then everyone will be guarded about their work. And like, oh, we will guard about having visitors over today so i am making some jollof some salmon roasted potatoes guys if you're gonna stick with me there's gonna be a lot of cooking videos i am not sweet ajele i am not uh Quanchewa's kitchen i am not any of those so i cannot really teach you how to cook but maybe for those on my same level or level where they still need to kind of step their game up maybe you can learn a thing or two from me or maybe you can teach me something right one thing i love to do is using some of the spices and herbs from my garden and anytime i use them mm, the aroma in my food is really 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 fantastic do you see those um mint leaves Oh my goodness, I don't use any of those on my <laughs> Ghanaian food, though, but I do like to take them for some tea just before going to sleep or waking up in the morning just to kind of like give me that fresh boost throughout the day. And also if I'm having like a headache or I'm feeling nauseous, like the combination of tea, um, mint and rosemary just does amazing. One day I'm going to make a video where I show you updates of my garden. I love gardening, you guys. It makes me happy. It's a passion of mine. It just kind of gives me some sort of healing and some type of connection with life nature and all of that so i will definitely take you guys on my herbalism let's call it journey how about that would you be interested here we go i did use some of that rosemary to um spice up my meat spice up uh, my jollof rice and obviously 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 one of the things that i love to use in my jollof rice that i found was so great is bell pepper i noticed that nigerians use that in their jollof rice a lot the way of making jollof rice is a bit different from ours in such that they use parboiled rice to make theirs which 
kind of gives that um, more of a harder texture to their jollof rice we use jasmine rice but when you do add the um, bell pepper to your um, let's say stew mixture it kind of sweetens up your jollof rice and kind of takes away the bitterness from the um the tomato paste that we normally use so oh my goodness please try adding red bell pepper if you haven't tried it already and if you have and you have any other tips please share them with me i'm so open to learning more about expanding my Ghanaian cooking horizons i cook a lot of italian you know abruzzi food but when it comes to Ghanaian food because it takes forever sometimes i shy away from it <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes we cannot shy away from it because our men will not eat that pasta all day every day right <laughs> Right here, I am transferring some of um, <clears throat> the meat into our beautiful gourmet air fryer. I use this air fryer for literally everything. And because I am trying to cut down on the things that we fry, I love using the air fryer because it is a healthier alternative than frying. Most of the time, you know, for jello fries, we tend to fry our meat. But with the air fryer, it gives it that crisp and at the same time, that moistness that we need in our jello fries meat. I am using beef uh, this time, but if you're using like, uh, you know, goat meat or whatever other meat you can do the same this particular air fryer has lasted me for i think over over six years now and i am not yet to change it it has been great you guys it has been really really great i love using it for everything even for things like um toasting my bagels toasting bread um it just anything or even if i want to just crisp up some um fish for my soups and i don't want to do anything like frying it or whatever that air fryer has been bomb you guys i have loved it ever since and just the fact that it's been so durable you know what i'm all about saving money i will recommend it to anybody if you want to buy that same air fryer probably this version will no longer be available there are new versions out there but i'll link it down below just check it out and if you need an air fryer buy that one the gourmet one is the best here you guys do you see this stew this jollof stew eh? mm! i think it was one of the best stews i had made in a long time for my jollof mm -hmm. Guys, I found the place and I'm so excited. It's so nice over here, except for the fact that it's still early in the morning. So it is pretty um, cloudy and drizzling. But as soon as like all of that goes away, like the weather is pretty per perfect. But because of the wind, I have to wear this sweater because I don't want, you know, I don't want to get sick. But yeah i am already enjoying it it's so nice i'm so excited like guys i love doing stuff like this you know when i get a little bit of time for myself i just love exploring and for me it doesn't have to be like oh you have to take the plane spend all of this money to like explore new things or do adventures just like the little simple things to appreciate like in your surroundings that you never knew existed is like enough for me like for me san diego is still new although i've been here for like over four years now like when you're busy parenting working just doing life you don't get the chance to like explore as much but now that i'm doing a lot of things you know in a remote uh, way it's just easier to take the opportunity to explore and see what you know your city has to offer i mean i'm over here you know sometimes it's just as easy as go on google and find what you wish you could could get and this morning I woke up and I'm like, I wanna have a little croissant and coffee right in front of the beach and do my work in front of the beach. Bam. <laughs> Bam. You guys, I think my camera and also the weather is like kind of foggy. So it's making my teeth look like as if it's yellow, but my teeth are not yellow. My teeth are white, okay? Okay. Let's go. The bottom.
My money yoke up, the way it stretch on I change locations to change the weather Know when that rain come, got my umbrella And when my day come, my name gon' stay up Yeah, I know, I know, I know Pedal to the metal, they know Gone and I won't let up, they know I'm not so fed up, they know I'm down, I'm done eating you guys and I decided to just come to the sunset cliffs and just take a nice walk because the scenery here is crazy. It's so pretty. And then all of a sudden I find like the cutest little setup. Somebody's about to propose. Like in real, I usually see stuff like this like on Instagram or something like that. But like in real life on a cliff in California, this has to be amazing. 